Welcome to Insights from the AI Lab, where we explore the cutting edge research shaping AI infrastructure's future. I'm Dave Nicholson with the Futurum Group. AI workloads are evolving rapidly, and there's one thing for sure you do not want to have, and that is idle GPUs in your data center. That's one reason why networking is so critical. We're going to be taking a look at a study that was done by Signal 65 in their AI lab in collaboration with Dell Technologies that took a look at an open fabric environment, the NICs and the switches involved, trying to solve for that problem. How do we make sure that GPUs are as fully utilized as possible? To dive into the details, I'm joined by Seamus Jones, Director of Technical Marketing Engineering at Dell Technologies, and Brian Martin, Director of AI and Data Center Operations at Signal 65, the world's leading independent AI lab. Gentlemen, welcome. Thanks, Dave. Hi, Brian. Hey, Seamus. So let's, let's, let's cut to the chase here. Uh, maybe Seamus, what did we test here exactly? Absolutely. So we took eight of our eight-way GPU XC9680 systems, each packed with eight H200 GPUs. So we've got these high performance systems all packed with GPUs. So a total of 64 GPUs and set them up in a distributed network. So that way we could then set up an AI cluster and look at the network traffic from GPU to GPU. The biggest thing is that we wanted to look at the, trans the transmission protocol between the GPU fabrics, because the last thing like, that you wanna do that you were even describing earlier is have an architecture that throttles performance of these very costly and very performant architectures. So we took a look at TCP or transmission protocol, transmission control protocol, so TCP testing, as well as some nickel testing on each of the fabrics. And we looked at that as compared to a, an, a full NVIDIA fabric. So we used open source uh, Broadcom, so the Broadcom 57608 NICs in our systems, as well as our Z series Z9864 800 gig switches. So we've got very high performance switches. We've got NICs that are all uh, open for, like open framework. And what we did is we wanted to take a look at what the performance of those might be as compared to uh, NVIDIA CX7s. So Brian, uh, Dell is known in the marketplace as a bit of a Switzerland when it comes to putting together solutions for their customers. And, um, and it seems like this is an indication of just that, uh, looking at an open environment. Uh, as an alternative, um, you know, we don't have a dog in the hunt, or you don't have a dog in the hunt in the, in in the labs. What what did you see in terms of network efficiency? Yeah, so definitely, um, I think the open nature of Dell products and their move towards you know democratizing access to AI. Uh, up and down their customer portfolio uh, is a critical part of this. As we looked at uh, RDMA over uh, converged fabric, uh, Ethernet uh, in this environment, we noticed a few things. And one of the first things we noticed is a much higher efficiency in CPU core utilization. Um, so there was a dramatic improvement in network gigabytes per second per GPU core, some 37% improvement uh, with this Dell Broadcom solution. And what that translates to is, again, less idle time for the GPU, and in this case, more free cycles on the CPU side for work the CPU has to be doing. So it's less of a load on the system, and that's gonna result in lower latency, potentially higher bandwidth, and definitely more available CPU for other tasks. Seamus, usually the first question that someone is going to ask in, these, in, the, in, in a context like this is, okay, what about scalability? <laughs> because these things don't happen on a single eight node cluster. So what about scalability? Absolutely. So what we were able to find within this study is that those 64 GPUs that were used within the 9680 cluster we, when we were tuning, fine tuning the Llama 2 70 billion model, we were able to achieve 12 samples per second at full scale, which is an outstanding scalable exercise. What we were also able to do is prove that when migrating from four nodes 
up to eight nodes and all the variations in between, you have a linear scaling model, which means that you're not wasting budget or uh, energy on product that you wouldn't actually be able to take full advantage, advantage of. It really shows that this open ethernet infrastructure, it can scale without introducing any bottlenecks and, uh, and it, it ensures that customers are getting the most bang for their buck when they're implementing in their data center on-prem. Exactly. You know, as a longtime performance engineer, I have to say, you know, near linear scaling or linear scaling is such a rarity to see. CPU multiprocessing benchmarks typically roll over uh, as you increase. So to see straight linear improvement in this cluster going from one node to two nodes to four nodes, six and all the way up to eight nodes was incredible. When we're as close as the three of us are to numbers and results like this, sometimes we forget to directly answer the question, you know, why should anybody really care about this? Uh, so, so just for a minute, Seamus, pretend like I'm a CIO or someone in my organization who is charged with gaining an understanding of what's available in infrastructure today. Why should I care about any of this? I mean, a, a core strategy of Dell and Dell Technologies has always been open standards. We sit on opens, we sit on standards boards, um, everything from OCP, so open compute standards, right through to, you know, memory as well as CPU stack uh, architectures. So there's having an open standard and allowing customers to have a vendor of choice is a, is a critical concern for us. It allows us to implement technologies faster, so it means that customers can get access to a wider array of different technologies. It means that they're not locked in to a one or a specific vendor or technology, and they can take advantage of um, the best technology that suits their best need. It also means that they're going to reduce their total cost of ownership, right? So if you have higher port efficiency through that helps reduce power um, across all of the platforms, it means that you're no longer spending all of that energy cooling the system. So that way you don't need to have more and more systems in the cluster to achieve the same results. So you're managing long-term costs as well as ensuring that you have the best efficiency in the platform. And then open standards, it also means, I mean, just having something that's open means that it's simpler to manage and maintain on a long-term basis. So you have things like faster link failover and robust telemetry from those switches, as well as the NICs and the XE9680s uh, or the GPU-based platforms to improve reliability because you have visibility um, from the iDRAC and from the internal components to ensure that you get the maximum performance at all times. Really what it does is by using open standards, you can tie into industry standard APIs to help manage and maintain the platforms if you don't want to use Dell's tools, but it means that you can manage your entire data center, not just Dell or a competitor's product. So we're big proponents of open standards. In this particular testing, uh, as Seamus mentioned, open standards definitely played a part, both in analyzing the telemetry of the network stack, as well as the GPU, and going further using the Redfish protocol, talking to iDRAC, we were able to map performance, against power um, and temperature. So we can watch the overall environmentals of the system in addition to its performance and get performance per watt metrics uh, in addition to raw performance metrics. Uh, and additionally, um, the other advantage of an open environment, as Seamus, Seamus mentioned earlier, was planning for the future and being what I would call future-proof. One of the things we see every week in this AI space is the evolution of models. Uh, we've gone from traditional models to mixture of experts. Uh, that has an impact on the backend network. Uh, we see a little more of the all-to-all -all traffic um, in some of the models. So having a open, flexible fabric that is adaptable to these evolving environments is also critical. Yeah, these agentic, these agentic workflows are really stressing the network speeds or network traffic and really causing um, 
unforeseen bottlenecks in some of these architectures. So making sure that we're scoped to be able to scale as a customer needs is a critical component of investing in these type of, of infrastructures. Definitely. Seamus, what exactly does that mean when we talk about all to all communications? Brian just mentioned that. Yeah, all to all is with, within nickel testing. So we have these communication libraries that are a benchmark. So we use an industry benchmark to try and determine, you know, okay, what does the communication from one GPU to the other as they're scaling? Are they, do they have uh, parallelism or within the large scale LLM when they're doing training or fine tuning? Do they need to be able to have uh, instruction sets that are, that are growing as the instructions uh, cause? So when we look at nickel testing specifically, and we're looking at the NIC, the switch, and the compute node, as well as the GPUs, we're ensuring that we're, we're looking at the best performance architecture. All to all effectively means that we're broadcasting all uh, traffic throughout all paths to see what the maximum performance could be, right? In this instance, we saw that um, the Thor 2 NICs that we tested, so the open standard NICs versus the CX-7 had around a 25.6% performance advantage, which is really surprising. And it, it, you see that it would be uh, dramatically impactful for things like Llama or GPT variants that exceed single GPU memory capacity. Because what people don't realize is that you're not just loading the LLM into a single GPU. All of these GPUs, all 64 of these GPUs are acting in tandem to try and get the best result. So if you think about it like a group chat or file sharing, within that group chat, if one, one person or network is slow, then the file will get stuck by that one person. Whereas if all the GPUs are able to be performant, then as you scale and add more nodes, we get that linear scaling that Brian was talking about earlier. So Brian, where can people go to get more information to actually see the study behind what we've been talking about? Great question, Dave. This and other studies can be found in our uh, Insights from the AI Lab webpage, uh, and the link will be in the description below. Speaking of insights from the lab, gentlemen, thank you for sharing some insights from the lab. I'm Dave Nicholson with the Futurum Group. Stay tuned to this series where we'll be delivering even more insight from the AI Lab.